Carlos Sanders um, goes on the other two races from the qualifying to the quarterfinals to the semifinals and now to the final. In lane one is John Stella from Kingsfield College. In lane two, Ojukoya Kuishara from Green Spring Schools. In lane three is Andolia Limot. One, uh, one girl you should watch out for. She's from Team Deep College. She won a semi-final in two in good time. There's uh, in lane four, Inavwe Blessing from Antonin Village Secondary School. She's also, she also won a semi-final meet in good time. There's Opor Fate from Oregon Senior High School. And then you have Lucky Fiona in lane six, Baptist Chad Academy School. There's Teniola Dewaku from Vivian Fowler. Two six to two, that's what she's putting on. And then she's in lane seven. And there's Audio Rumi um, of Oli Child College as well. You should watch out for uh, Alowoli, Alowoli and Limot in Navwe Blessing and Awful Fate. They're also doing well in the 200 meters. They're also here in the final of the 100 meters. Uh, you should watch out for, I'm thinking one of these names might just uh, emerge tops at this uh, particular final. But that's it on your screen for four feet in lane five. Ten your lines, I know that you should watch out for in lane seven. Let's see how this pans out. Off we go. And it's a uh, heli break there from lane three from Alonia Alimov. I told you to watch out for Ash. He's coming on strong. Can you know, with blessing catch up with her? No, Alimov will definitely take this one. And um, she's done it in good time. Okay, in you know, Blessing finishing second. And between uh, Odukoya Feishara and uh, the lady in lane five, we will confirm that for you. Uh, who won? Um, I've got the confirmation. You came third. We're trying to get uh, that confirmation for you, but it's alone and limon as I mentioned. So that's it. Uh, pictures from the maiden edition of the channels, under 17 track and field classics. That's one we designed to take athletics back to the schools, to give attention to athletics at the grassroots, to revive the story of athletics in Nigeria. Because back in the day, uh, even before football, athletics used to be what we, we talk about, we beat our chest. And then uh, it, it started dying, that decline. We didn't like it. So... Channel TV said, well, we'll go back to the schools. And so we put together the maiden edition of the channels on the 17 track and field classics. That's one to discover talent in school. So each time I come on this show and I try to make you understand the essence of sports and education, I try to look for new ways to talk about it so that you can understand. Because at that stage, it's not just about the talent. A lot of persons are involved. It's a circle, and it goes round and round, and everyone must contribute. Sports and education, once again, gets our attention on the show tonight. You see uh, these two gentlemen all the way from the United Kingdom, FCV International Football Academy. That's where they are from. Uh, Russell Fryer is a coach with F FCV International Football Academy, uh, while Martin Harris is a director with FCV International Football Academy. Guys, good to have your sports tonight. Thank you. Beautiful. Let me begin with you, your, your closer. Um, why are you guys in Nigeria? Uh, we're over here at the moment to promote the camps that we're going to be running in April. So they're football camps um, with a view to eventually uh, providing awareness to, to, to children that when they reach a particular age that we, we offer a program back in the UK um, that's both education and football. So we place equal importance on both. Mm. So we, we provide an education um, at college and at university, which Martin will go into more detail about. Mm. But also, as, as coaches, we provide an academy level um, football development. So while we're here, my role is to provide taster sessions for what they will expect in, on the camps in April. Like and that. in April, we'll be, we'll be here to, to run a one-week camp in Lagos, a one-week camp in Abuja. Beautiful. So, Martin, whenever I hear sports, education and development, it's just something in me that just, that just comes alive because it's very important. But you tell me, how important is it, sports and education? Well, they go hand in hand. You know, if, you, if you educate somebody but don't have the health benefits, they're going to struggle. If you have the health benefits of sport but don't educate them, they're going to struggle. So the two of them do really work together. And from us, we want to make sure that our academic students grow 
as academics, but also as sporting individuals as well. Mm. You're going to see um, a video. Uh, there was a press conference today in Lagos, and after that press conference, Russell had a session with the kids uh, that were available. What were you telling them, particularly at this, at this level? What, what were you saying to them? Um, we, had a, we had a mixed group, so that's quite important that we manage difference. So I was trying to work on basics, um, passing skills, passing and receiving skills. So I was talking to them about the quality of the pass, opening the body up and moving that ball nice and quickly. Um, mm. Later I went on to talk about moving the ball through the thirds and not just because what happened at the beginning and what happens in many grass, grassroots clubs is that they look to pass the ball straight from the back to the front. And what I was trying to emphasise was that we can build the play up Mm. So I only had a 30-minute session, but hopefully some of the, some of the guys got the, the message that we're trying to get across. Oh, that's nice, because at that, at that stage, they have a burning passion. They want to do what you're saying to them. But let me still get you talking, uh, Russell. How challenging is it to you know, get kids through the basics at this stage? Yeah, it is difficult at times. But I think one of the things that we try to focus on, particularly at FCV, is, is the fun aspect, the social side of things. So can we get the, the kids having fun um, and learning at the same time? My mm. own philosophy is that if they learn uh, and they, if, they, if they enjoy what they're doing, then they're going to learn. If they learn, they're going to enjoy, they're going to go back and tell the parents, then they're going to come back and they're going to enjoy some more, learn some more, and it completes a circle. And that's, that's what I'm trying to promote when I'm over here on the camps. Mm. So, Martin, um, when you look at it, it doesn't just take this young talent. Parents are involved, games, masters. Um, how do we keep the interest going at this level? I think, like you quite rightly said, it starts from the parents and, you know, and us as mentors, as adults. Um, one of the things we're doing is we're promoting uh, coach mentoring. So... Russell will be over here obviously in April as long as working with the, the kids that are going to be at the camp he's going to be working with Nigerian coaches as well mm -hmm. so what we want to do is mentor them and upskill them so when they go back into their communities into their schools into their clubs they can impart that knowledge not just onto the kids at the camp but all of those that they come in contact with and that again snowballs and helps that process move forward. Mm -hmm. And how do you identify talent, Russell? Because sometimes you as a coach at the grassroots can see a talent and mom and dad says, no, that's not what I see in my kid. Yeah. We, we have a program called the channels on the 17 track and field. And you know, at 17, you're not far from adulthood. So yeah. uh, how do we keep them to, to move on with that passion, probably going to even represent the country? Uh, yeah, I think in order to ignite passion you need to get them enjoying it first and foremost i think that's something that gets lost quite often in mm. grassroots coaching and it's something i want to try and get across to to the coaches and um, when we do this this upskilling and um, if we can make them enjoy it they're going to learn some more and in terms of identifying talent i think it's quite difficult what we see quite a lot is academies looking at seven and eight year olds and and painting them out to be the new messi or ronaldo mm -hmm. What we, what we know is that when they reach 13, 14, they develop quite a lot. So they can go from being 5 foot 4 to 6 foot 3 in just a, a, a month or two. And, um, and we don't know how that's going to affect their bodies. So what we need to do, in my opinion, is wait until after that period before we start looking to truly identify the talent. That's right. Sounds good. Uh, because you, you can't rush them at this level. Uh, so, so, Martin, I look at the United um, Kingdom. Let's use United Kingdom as a model. Um, there was a time they paid so much attention to the grassroots, and now we started seeing it. It started paying off in the age grade competitions. I think they even won the under 20 World Cup. Yeah. You know? So, what can we do back here? You guys are coming back in April. What can we do to, you know, emulate what is going on in the United Kingdom? Well, in the UK, the FA brought out the DNA. Um, and, and what they wanted to do was from the senior level right down the youth level and impact that also into the grassroots and having a system and a philosophy that people could understand and the players could buy into and the coaches could also buy into as well. And that started from the bottom to the top and that's obviously helped that youth model improve, what you've seen as you've quite rightly said, the World Cup where we've won that. But also then the senior team, obviously then those players progressing into the seniors and where we come obviously as semi-finalists uh, last year, or sorry, this year. So, again, it, it helps, but you have to have it right at the grassroots. Mm. 
if you then can have the impact at the very top. And having it right at the grassroots is very important. And that's what yeah, you've also been trying to say. But there are a lot of distractions, um, Russell. A lot. Agents, mm -hmm. scouts, even family. Yep. So at this stage, what's the need for that grassroots talent? What are you saying to him when you know that this guy isn't yet ready, but dad is saying, I've put so much, I've invested so much, I sent him to MCV, I sent him to this academy. Mm. So I just want him to go and play 